a great start with a four-game sweep of the Tigers. Then taking two of three from the New York Yankees to move within one game in the AL East. Tonight, Red Hot Delvin Young and the Minnesota Twins come to town, facing the Rays' top pitching prospect, Jeremy Hellickson, in his Major League Baseball debut. Tonight, we welcome you to St. Petersburg and Tropicana Field as the Rays' longest homestand of the year continues. It will be the Tampa Bay Rays playing host to the Minnesota Twins in the first game of a four-game series. The pennant race continues. The Rays a full game back in the East, trailing the New York Yankees. Over in the American League Central, the Minnesota Twins a half game back of the Chicago White Sox. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Tropicana Field with Kevin Kennedy and Todd Callis. I'm Dwayne Stats. It's great to have you look again. Well, a great homestand. The Rays have won eight of their last nine overall. The Twins have won eight straight. Pennant race continues to heat up, and right in the middle of this pennant race drops a 23-year-old right-hander, Jeremy Hellickson, tonight. Yeah, it's always fun to see a young starter get his uh, first start in the major leagues, especially with all the accolades and the praise that you hear. And here's the guy that everybody in Major League Baseball wanted and asked for in a trade before the deadline. The Rays said, no way. As a matter of fact, we're going to call him up, and he's going to get a start. At least one here in the major leagues tonight. 12 and 3, great numbers in the minor leagues in Triple A with a 2.45 earned run average, and he's got that one great pitch along with great command, and that's the great equalizer, the great changeup. Both these teams have played very well for the last month, and in particular for the Minnesota Twins, the former Ray Delman Young is burning up the American League. Yeah, he's he's made some adjustments that we'll talk about during the broadcast, but. Uh, be careful, he's still hitting that first pitch overall, and when he's getting that pitch to hit that good fastball, he is driving the ball out of the ballpark. He's pulling the ball. His batting average here since July the 1st, 431 with six home runs and 30 RBIs. 30 RBIs in the month of July, slugging percentage 734. In fact, he's been hit 388 for the last two months, so he is on fire right now. This has been a special homestand already. The Matt guards a no-hitter. The Rays winning two of three from New York. And tonight, the Major League debut of Jeremy Hellickson. be an exciting night of baseball as the Rays take off Minnesota. Two red-hot teams. Hellickson on the mound. We caught up with not only Jeremy, but with Joe Madden and Andrew Friedman talking about the Major League debut of Jeremy Hellickson in tonight's Geico quote of the game. You know, I was real excited. I uh, really didn't know what to do when Charlie called me. I got the chills and then just called all my family. 
What I like his makeup. He's got great stuff, kind of sneaky with the fastball, good command. Um, I'm, I'm, I really feel good that he's going to pitch well. It's really first and foremost to get our guys an extra day and being in the fortunate position of having someone like him to be able to do this with and also to get him acclimated in the major leagues, whether he's – pitches a lot more for us in August or whether it's September, you know, to get him acclimated is a good thing and something that I think will help us for the rest of the season. Uh, I mean, I think I just have to try to take it like any other start. Um, I mean, it's all about uh, the routine for me and uh, I'm just going to stay with that. Jeremy Hellickson and the Tampa Bay Rays ready for baseball on a Monday night. Four minutes away from the first pitch, Dwayne Stats and Kevin Kennedy with the starting lineups and the debut of the 23-year-old next right here on Sunsport. The Money Superstore. And by Checkers. Little place. Big taste. Rays taking the field and they send the 23-year-old rookie. Jeremy Hellickson to the mound making his Major League debut. A special moment here at Tropicana Field. As the Rays open this series against the Minnesota Twins. And here is the Minnesota lineup. Hellickson will be facing tonight. Leading off, Denard Spann in center field. Alexi Casilla in second. And Delman Young, who has been very hot, hits third. Jason Kubel is in right. Michael Kadair at first base. And Jim Tomey will be the designated hitter. At third base, Danny Valencia. He's been very good. J.J. Hardy back active and healthy at shortstop. And Drew Butera will do the catching. He will hit ninth. Jeremy Hellican getting his first start in the big leagues, age 23. He's from Des Moines, Iowa. He was a fourth round pick in 2005. Six seasons in the minors. Look at that number. 49 and 16 as far as the record and 2.66 a career minor league ERA. He is the number one pitching prospect up from the minor leagues. And here's the defense for the Rays tonight behind Jeremy Hellickson, Carl Crawford in left, BJ up in the center, and Matt Joyce back out there in right field around the infield at third base, Evan Longoria, shortstop, Jason Bartlett, Reed Brignac at second, and Sean Rodriguez once again at first base, and John Jaso behind the plate for Jeremy Hellickson. 
Pellick sit up from Durham, where he led the International League in wins with 12. An earned run average there of 245 and 123 strikeouts. And in his last outing against Lehigh Valley on the 29th, the Rays limited him to just three innings with an eye toward the possible promotion. He made 37 pitches in three shutout innings in that start. And here is Denard Spann. We're all set to play, and the first pitch of Hellickson's Major League career is a strike call, a fastball. We are underway. 92, exactly where John Jay so run it, wanted it, right there off the inside corner, and a little tailing action to go with it. Spann goes after the next pitch, a fastball, and yanks it foul out of play. 0-2. And Hellickson has made quick progress the last couple years in the Rays minor league system. He's always had pretty good command, a good fastball, but the changeup, the development of the changeup a couple years ago really propelled him and has made him the Rays' number one pitching prospect. Ground ball back to the mound. And the toss to first. That takes care of Denard Spann. One up, one down. And he called that pitch. Jason wanted the change up, then he went fastball. Hellickson just stood there. He wanted his curveball. And we'll take a look. There's the change up, the call fastball away. And then finally, Hellickson's waiting until Jason calls the curve and he flips his first curveball up there. And look at this. I've been here a long time. I got that. No problem. No panic. <laughs> just Casilla. The pitch is down and in. And one of the things you notice right away about Hellickson is exactly that, Kevin. He is calm, cool, and collected out there. One and one. I don't know what's going on on the inside. He said he was going to treat it like right. just any other start. Always oh, hard to believe that when it's your first big league start. You're not kidding. How about that movement? Little tailing action with 93 with the fastball. Good pitch. Two balls and a strike. And one of the things that he had been uh, spending time on at Durham, particularly this year and last year, was that breaking ball and shortening up the curve a little bit. He's behind Casilla now, three and one. There's Delman Young on deck. Good movement, too. Ran back over the inside corner on the 3 1 count. That's a nice pitch. Take a look. Fight the inside corner. And a popper right side. Grignac out from second base. Has it. Two up and two down. So a little comeback into the mound from Denard Spann and the pop to second by Casilla. So the bases are empty as Helixson faces. Delman Young. And Young's numbers very imposing. He's fourth in the league overall in hitting at 335. And he's driven in 81 runs. To go with 14 home runs. Strike one. I'll tell you what, first pitch fastball, and Jason was setting up in, and that's danger area, but Helixson gets it by him because Young has been pulling the ball. For power. Down and away. One and one. If you watch batting practice today. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> it was uh, pretty scary. Yes. Putting on quite an exhibition. Oh, man. I'm telling you. He was launching. And I'm out in front right there with a change up. And the count is one and two. Well, he hasn't thrown a changeup yet except the last two pitches, and he saved these for the guy you got to throw him to. That is a beautiful pitch. 82. Exact same arm action as his fastball. And a little tap toward the hill. Hellickson with the throw to first, and he takes care of Delvin Young in Minnesota. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the first. Rays coming into hit.
look at the race lineup tonight. John Jaysell, the catcher, leads off, followed by Carl Crawford and Evan Longoria. High bar Joyce and Upton down the middle. Sean Rodriguez at first at seventh. Renyak at second. And Jason Bartlett, the shortstop, the former twin, hits ninth. Carl Pavano has pitched extremely well for the Twins. Comes in at 13 and 6. Five complete games, an excellent 3 2 1 earned run average. 238 batting average against. And here is John Jaso. First pitch is a strike. And Pavano, the veteran right hander, has been very, very good for Minnesota. And a ground ball, right side, grabbed by Casilla, throw to first, got him. And that's one thing you'll see a lot from Minnesota. Two very good defensive teams here in this series. Yeah, strictly on fielding percentage, the Twins are number one in all of Major League Baseball. They come in at 991 as a team. A nice play by Casilla. Not sure he had to jump, but he does anyway and gets it done. One up, one down. Around Garden higher in the middle. First pitch to Crawford is a strike. Garden higher has the Twins scoring a lot of runs and making every play. Carl out in front. Two strikes the count. Twins have won 10 of 11 and eight straight. And for the life of that eight game winning streak, They've averaged over eight runs a game. Pitch is high, one and two, and their pitching has allowed just two earned runs a game during that winning streak. And how about Pavano? Eight and zero in his last ten starts. This one stays inside, two and two. These are imposing numbers during this winning streak. Take a look at this. They're hitting 368, holding the opposition to 218. There, there's a fly ball back into right. Kubel back to the track, though, and he makes the catch. Two gone. Uh, Jason Kubel out there in right field. Here's the rest of the defense for the Twins tonight. Delman Young in left field, and Denard Span in center field along with Kubel. Around the infield, Danny Valencia at third base, J.J. Hardy at shortstop, Alexi Casilla at second. Michael Kadire plays first base tonight, and Drew Butera catching for Carl Pavano. And there's Delman Young out there in the left field. Evan Longoria takes a strike. Evan lifts the fly ball to the center. Span is back a few steps and puts it away. Three up, three down. We're one inning in, no score.
Sinek, he sure was. Take a look at his comebacker. I've seen that before in the minor leagues. I can handle a comebacker. Gets that first down, comes back with a 3-2 fastball, gets the pop up. Reed Brainiac and then a great curveball right here. Two strikes to Delman Young and he stays under control and gets that third out. A nice one, two, three first inning for Jeremy Ellison. And there's a look at his minor league career. 103 starts in the minor leagues, five relief appearances, 49 and 16, averaging almost 10 strikeouts per nine innings with a 2.66 ERA. And here's Jason Kubel taking a look at a fastball around the knees. That's a strike. Kubel, Kadair, and Tommy do up. One and one. Well, the Rays and the Twins are in the second inning here. The Yankees home against Toronto, and Swisher's in a two run homer in the bottom of the first. And they've taken a two to nothing lead on the Blue Jays. Could it be that he's hitting second tonight? I'll tell you, that just seems to be the ideal spot for him, and he is back in that second spot. There you go. One and two, the count to Kubel. Down a bit. Two and two. Foul ball straight back. Again, off speed. Well, a good differential between the, the four seam fastball and the changeup, about 10. To 11 miles an hour. He's hit 92 93 with the fastball and about 82 with the change. That's a good arm speed. That's a good pitch. And a swing and a miss. That's a nice fastball right there. After a couple of change ups to come back with that fastball, and he logs his first big league strikeout. That's why it's a good pitch. The differential looks exactly the same with the arm speed, except this time it's not the change up, it's a 93 fastball up. And Jason Kubel couldn't catch a big leg kick. Leads with the left side, the hip right there, keeps everything in and explodes with the fastball. It's a nice fluid delivery. Good finish. Kadire and the pitch is away. Michael Kadire hitting 276. His delivery is why he's able to make those first two plays in the first inning. He doesn't fall off to the left side. He's got a nice finish. Stays right there. Two balls and a strike the count. Ellickson out of Des Moines, Iowa. Out of Hoover High. Down to third and right there is Longoria. Picks it up and the throw to first in time to take care of Kadir. Longoria to Sean Rodriguez. Two outs. Uh, you're going to enjoy that in the big leagues if you're Hellickson. Nice play to knock it down by Evan and then nice play on the other end by Sean Rodriguez. Good stretch over there. Get the out. Yeah, that's one thing young pitchers always find very quickly that the defense is usually much better in the big leagues than what they've been used to. You bet. Absolutely. Especially this club up here. Now the shift is on for big Jim Tomey, the DH. And did he go? Yes, he did. He could not check in time on the fastball. That's a strike. Here's where Tomey is on the all time home run list. Tenth with 577. One and one. There you get six more to catch McGuire. A few more beyond that to catch Frank Robinson. That's that's doable this year. A couple months to go in the season. The one one. Two balls and a strike. 
pretty nice pickup for the Twins this year. Solid numbers. You take that, 13 home runs, 258 batting average. Nice presence in the clubhouse. And a curveball in there for a strike. It's two and two. Hey, well, he's got the three pitches that you know we talk about a lot. The depth, a good curveball, 75, great changeup, and a 93 fastball. Full count now to Tommy. Ellickson just turned 23 this past April. Three two. And he has Tommy out front. Got him on a changeup. Six up and six down to start this one. We go to the bottom half of inning two as we take another look at Hellickson's change. Rays and the Twins. Throwing the first <laughs> no hitter in Ray's history, and the uh, celebrating continues over there. By the way, uh, Garza's wearing a mic. Uh, he's mic'd up for us tonight. We'll be uh, checking in with him from time to time. Uh, James Shields knows the camera. <laughs> Let him know. Really, I bar takes a bitch low, one and oh. Yeah, if you got a mic on, you got to be careful what you say. There's a high fly ball back into deep center. Span not quite to the track makes the catch, and Ibar is out number one. Let's uh, let's listen in on Matt Garza. Hey, so hello, put him in the book. I'm not sure if that's play-by-play -play or uh, analysis going on there. I don't know what it was, but it was uh, fun. A hybrid form of comments. There's a strike call to Matt Joyce. He put two in the book for the strikeouts. Joyce shoots it foul. Hard hit, but well foul. Up the right side, 0-2. Pavano has done his fair share of changing speeds this year with that uh, basically a changeup he calls a Foss, and that's been a very big weapon for him. Yeah, Al Nipper, my former pitching coach in Boston, taught him that when Carl was coming up in the minor leagues, the Red Sox. And off the plate, one and two. You know, one thing Carl has, he really has ideal mechanics. Good hip turn. He really has good mechanics. Really solid. Which enables him to pound the zone. Only 22 walks in 100. Now 150 innings because he commanded 148 and two thirds. So 
that's excellent. 22 walks in 150 innings. You know, the Rays drew two walks off him in six of the third innings. Up in Minneapolis, it was as if he were wild. That's a lot. <laughs> two and <laughs> one outing. And a high foul out of play. Ray's got three runs off them. Two earned on seven hits. You can see the strikeout to walk ratio. That's very good. It sure is. Anything three to one is excellent. Almost three three and three quarters to one. Pushing toward four to one. That's outstanding. Joyce checks the pitch drops low. It's his change up. Doesn't that tell you though how good that is? Doesn't that tell you when you think of Cliff Lee? I mean, what planet is he on? Good strike out the walk ratio. Oh, it's yeah, twelve it to one or something. Otherworldly. And he completes games. Another complete game loss last night for Cliff Lee of the Rangers. Three two hit on the ground and through the right side base hit. That's the first hit of the game. A one out single here in the second. Matt Joyce is aboard. In tonight's game and all season long, Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports and Fox Sports Florida. And here's B.J. Upton. Upton, one of the bats in this lineup with a history of success against Pavano. B.J.'s 5 of 11 off him with a double and a home run. Pitch a little bit wide. One ball, no strikes. I thought uh, DJ had the key hit in the game yesterday, that double to right center field that helped set up two runs against the Yankees in the third inning. Both runs scored. Well, base runner scored, I should say. He takes a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. Rays off the three to nothing victory over the Yankees yesterday afternoon. Joyce back in. And the Rays are certainly heartened by the game that James Shields oh. pitched yesterday. He was very, very good. Well, you heard Carl Crawford. Post game say that it was the best game of the year for him. I heard Joe Madden on the post game say that's the best he's ever seen him throw, period. There goes the runner. The pitch is a ball and the throw is in time. Joyce caught stealing. Casilla taking the tag from Butera as Upton took the pitch for a strike. Our, a ball just a little bit off the plate. Good throwing mechanics from Drew Butera right here. Good alignment, good quick transfer. It was a strike down there. Beautiful throw. Just watching him between innings, and the reason I was locking in on him is I played against his father, Sal Buter, who was an excellent defensive catcher. Got him wrong. There are the strike Sal's here tonight. He uh, is scouting for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. And I asked him if he was scouting anybody in particular. He said he <laughs> might keep an eye on that guy behind the plate. I'll bet. For the Twins, his son. Two is low. So the count is full. Well, Bavano really loves throwing to Butera. That's That's right. a great compliment there. Bavano having such a great year. Yeah, he sets up nice and low. Let you get down there. Three, two, and a ground ball up the middle. There's a base hit into center. And Upton is aboard. Uh, BJ got his hands inside that. That was a nice piece of hitting right there. Talked about it going to right center yesterday. A lot of base hits up the middle into right field for BJ. That's where you got to go. You get those points up there. That batting average. Yeah, and that'd be a, a great approach for him from here on out. He could be so valuable to this team by doing that. Great speed at first base. Over there with two gone and Sean Rodriguez in the batter's box. Out of the way, one ball, no strikes. Change up, first pitch. There go 
throws Upton. Pitch is a strike, and the throw is not in time. DJ got a very good jump. And Butera didn't have much of a chance, made the throw, but it was way late. Steal number 29 for Upton. Yeah, great jump. Watch BJ right here. Great jump. He's got about four strides, and Butera throws high. Had to rush it a little bit. Those long strides, straight steal, straight at the bag. Easy. Well, Rodriguez fouls it. One and two. Good pitch to hit, too, right there. He knows it. He can get through it. Tell you, Sean has uh, in just a, a handful of at bats. He's been good against Pavano. Three for five with a home run. And a base hit and a run scored off him in the game in Minnesota this year. Two balls, two strikes. He got robbed yesterday a couple of times. He hit the ball well, stung it twice, especially that bases loaded line drive. The second turned into a double play. Did a good first base yesterday, too. Now the 2 2. And strike three call, a fastball up. Got him, and that retires the side. We're at the end of two. No score. is what should the Rays do with Hellickson after tonight? Move him right into the rotation, TB1, put him into the Rays bullpen, TB2, send him back to Durham until the rosters expand in September, TB3. Text your vote to 789-789. That's brought to you by AutoWay. If you need a car, truck, or van, call 1-800-SHOP-AUTOWAY. We will talk in the fourth inning to a couple of members or at least one member of Hellickson's family. Some of those people drove all the way down from Des Moines to be here for tonight's debut. Guys, back to you. All righty, Valencia takes the first pitch. Danny Valencia, the third baseman, and that pitch is in there. A strike, a fastball, 0 1. Breaking ball misses, 1 and 1. That's a short little drive from uh, Des Moines to uh, yeah. the Tampa Bay region. And uh, so why not make that little drive to <laughs> see uh, Jeremy's first big league outing? Foul ball. And uh, those who didn't make the drive, I'm sure, are uh, at Porky's Pub and Garage uh, cheering on Jeremy Hellix. I had a feeling you'd know that place. <laughs> <laughs> A little time in Des Moines yeah, once in a while. Yeah, yeah. A little late time there. Yeah. 
league myself. A ball, two strikes here. Hardy next, and then Butera. One hopper to second. Brignac got it. That takes care of Valencia. Seven in a row, retired by Hellickson to start this game. Here's the shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Well, the Twins finished off their last road trip six and one. And then they went home and swept the three game series from the Mariners. And that has run their uh, winning streak to eight games. One and all the count. Hardy takes a fastball inside. This one on the inner part of the strike zone. And with this latest streak, they're a half game behind the Chicago White Sox in the AL Central. One and two, a cut the miss by Hardy. Like that, going up in the zone, 92 miles an hour. Been pretty consistent with his fastball as far as velocity, 92, 93, and he's obviously shown no fear about going inside. And a wave and a miss. He got ahead one, two on the fastball that strikes him out on a change. And the differential is consistent. 82 changeup, 11 miles different than his 893 fastball. And it looks the same. Great depth, great arm speed. Here's the catcher, Drew Butera. Swings through it, strike one. Vernon Wells has hit a home run for the Blue Jays in the top of the second, and it's two to one. New York leading Toronto. Top of the second in New York. Fly ball down the left field line. Crawford on the move into foul territory. And he makes the catch alongside the low wall. That retires the side. One, two, three. No score. Middle of the third. Concert Series presented by Hens Express. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets now. Speaking of uh, train, an old railroad man, only in the sense that that's what he used to do, but he's young at heart. A great Rays fan. He was 100 years old, celebrated his birthday yesterday, and uh, was really celebrating after the Rays shut out the Yankees 3 to nothing. Joe Gugino, 
uh, worked on the railroad for years, and he loves Rays baseball. Wow. And we just want to say happy birthday, a hundred years young. Happy birthday. Awesome. First pitch to Reed Brignac, and that's a strike. He dumps this one to the left side. Hardy scoops and throws. Not in time. Brignac beats it out. Didn't hit it hard, and that allowed him the time to pick up the infield hit. And that play took an awfully long time developing. Hardy shading Brignac up the middle. He had to come in and on the run, and he short hops Kadaya right there, and with that, Reed Brignac's gets in there safely. So the leadoff hitter aboard for the Rays in the third. This is Jason Bartman. He puts down a bunt third base side. Valencia with the pickup and his throw is in time. Brignac bunted up to second on the sacrifice. It goes 5 3 for the first out. Now, Valencia was anticipating that, so he got to the ball quickly. Playing in on the turf. See at the top of the order, can drive in a run here. John Jason followed by Carl Crawford. Jaso up there. He takes a good look at the pitch down off speed. Jaso came into the game hitting 271 and 286 with mid in scoring position. And he started to go, but check. Pitch breaking down. Jay saw in the uh, game in Minnesota when the Rays saw Bovano. He was in that game and singled home a run in the fourth inning. In a position to drive in a run here in the third tonight. And he takes a close look at that pitch. And that's too low. Boy, he's looked these pitches over. Yeah, he sure has. He's not flinching on the changeups. Bono going off speed an awfully lot here the first 10 batters of the game. Good look by John Jason. That's a strike. Three and one. Well, Fox track says that was outside. Bono gets the call. And that's ball four. So Jaso goes to first. The Rays will put men at first and second. And all of those pitches were pretty close in that sequence. That one just off. Yeah, and up and up and away a little bit on that one. I thought he might get the call on that one for a second, too. Now Carl Crawford. Carl hit the ball to the track in right field his first time. And he's out in front. A lot of, one. A lot of first pitch changeups tonight for Pavano. And that was a good one. Look at the depth on this one as he turns it over. Carl open the night 10 of 25 lifetime against Pavano. It's a 400 average off him. He fouls a fastball the other way out of play. Finds himself down two strikes. Rays had Upton at second with two outs in the second when Rodriguez was caught looking. Now Brignac's at second with Jaso at first, one out in the third. The 0 2 to Crawford. And the fastball missed off the plate end. It's a good sequence so far, though, by Pavano. He tried to sneak that two seamer off the inside corner. Just missed. Let me throw another change up here. And Crawford is. 
is out on strikes. He started him with the changeup. He yeah. finished him with the changeup. Strikeout number two for Pavano. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell that was coming. That's what that two seamer before this pitch was all about. To get you thinking a little bit, and then he goes back soft away. Good depth on the changeup. And Carl is way out in front. So far this game, an exhibition of off-speed pitching. Two great changeups in action. Now Evan Longoria. And he takes a strike. Change up. Evan with a dozen lifetime advance against Bovano and only one hit. Up and away. Fastball out of the strike zone. One and one. Well, Carl will treat Evan right here as if a base was open at first base. That's no disrespect to Willie Ivar. That's more about the respect to Evan Longoria. Foul. A little bit of Butera. There's Ivar. He's hitting cleanup. Again, he was on base three times in the. Last game of the New York series yesterday, including a double and a run score. That last pitch to Evan was, was also probably a ball down the way, a little cut action to it. Takes this one down. Two and two. So far, everything away. All four pitches in this sequence down and away. Producer does. This ball probably four inches offside, but outside. But look at those hands right there. It puts the barrel on the bat. We've seen him go to right field a lot this week. And David Price and Matt Garza pumped up about that. Nice job. Now Willie Ibar is out in front of a changeup. That's a strike. So the Rays break out to a one nothing lead. Boy, that ball was was about four inches off the outside corner. That's yep. it, but it was up. He never knew he could reach it. I'm going to take the RBI to right field here. That's what run producers do. One and one. Yeah, good. Run producers in the middle of the order. They they hit pitches off the plate to drive in runs with regularity. I still go back to. The game against Justin Verlander last week, where Pena hit that home run to dead center in the first inning. Butera with a look down at first. Counts one and two to Ibar. Tricky catchers, taught by his dad. That's right. <laughs> Carlos hit that home run. Now we're going to go back to that for just a second before the pitch. It was about four or five inches up. And off the outside corner of Verlander and Carlos expanded the zone and hit, hit that home run to dead center field. Well, that's the first run allowed by Minnesota pitching in over 23 innings. That's how good their pitching has been. And uh, the streak of eight consecutive wins. Longoria first, Jaso at third. One and two, the count to Ibar. Gets it on the ground to first, gloved by Kadire, and he'll make the play unassisted. The Rays settle for a run. They strand two through three. It's one nothing Tampa Bay.
You know what I'm talking about over there? And then go. Hey, say hi to your mom. Oh, no. oh my so chest hurts so bad, I can't breathe. Hey, Joyce, just put this mom. Matt Garza, <laughs> Mike Tear, and uh, opened the homestand with the first raised no hitter. And he will. Uh, Will not start in this uh, series here against the Minnesota Twins. The Rays have Jeff Neiman and David Price and Wade Davis due to follow Hellickson in this four game series. Here's Denard Span. He's the leadoff man for Ron Garden Hire. Puts it on the ground to short. Bartman makes the play. Span is. Out number one here in the fourth inning. Fourth inning means it's time for our AT&T trivia question. Here it is. Who was the last Rays starting pitcher to win his major league debut? We have Jeremy Hellickson making his debut here tonight. Lexi Casilla, the second baseman up here, shortens and the pitch is a fastball for a strike. One ball, one strike. You see you getting a lot of playing time and most of it at second base with uh, Orlando Hudson on the DL. Two and one to count. Yeah, they've had uh, their fair share of injuries too. Ronnie Garden Hire, Justin Morneau, especially with the concussion. This one is down. Yeah, Morno has battled that concussion. He's, he's been taking batting practice uh, from time to time. Uh, apparently, we here the last couple days in uh, Minneapolis, but he's just not quite ready yet. And that pitch is a little bit low. He didn't miss by much on the fastball and a walk to Casilla, the first base runner allowed by Hellickson after he had retired 10 straight. Yeah, he got by behind Casilla in the first inning, three and one, but came back and got him. The pop out this time, Casilla takes it all the way and this time drives the walk. Now here's Delman Young. Young drops this one into right field. Off speed for a base hit. Casilla is on his way to third. The throw is toward second. And so Young goes after that first pitch, which is nothing new. He he's up there ready to swing the bat at all times and picks up a hit. That was a good pitch. He just cued it off the end of the bat, and when you're hot, you're hot, you find a hole. That's exactly what happened for Delman Young. A little break for him right here. Good change up. It's it right off the end of the bat, cues it, drops it right into right field in front of Matt Joyce. Big swing right there. Double play still in order. Ellison is uh, cool. No reaction on that. Now the left-handed hitting outfielder Jason Kubel. Pitch is away. A ball, no strikes. Walk in a base hit with one out. Men at first and third. Ground ball right side that's going to go through for a base hit. Casillas scores. Young stops at second and Kubel found a hole on the right side of the infield. This game is tied 1-1. He yeah, got the ground ball. Kubel just got it in the right spot. Take a look. It's a good pitch away. This ball is a little bit off the outside corner. He rolls over to the right side but finds a hole. As you see Brignac's up close in double play depth. Had he been back, not looking for two, he might have got to it. But that's what you play with first and third and one out. You play double play depth, and he gets it through the right side for the base hit. Michael Kadire in the batter's box. 
And the first pitch, a fastball strike. Kadir retired in the second inning on a nice play by Longoria. All hit back of the bag at third, and Evan made the play. Kadir out in front, chasing the breaking ball. That's a nice curveball there. That had good top to bottom break to it right here. Look at this. Fade away from Michael Kadire. And he starts to go after that one ball in the dirt. Runner's going to try to advance. He is safe at third base. Young moves into third. And the Rays want the appeal, and Longoria came out of that asking for the appeal. And Jerry Crawford at first says Kadire's out on strikes. That's heads up by Longoria. That is heads up by the Rays' third baseman. It's a strikeout and a wild pitch. Uh, he sure did go. There's no question he carried his hands across home plate. Now, Jason's got to concentrate on throwing Young out, but Evan Longoria has a presence of mind to Try to make a sweet tag, but he remembered the swing. Okay, he's in there. That's a good call. He was safe, but Evan was the one. That's good leadership from a young third baseman. Only his third league in the year in the league, and he got the call. Now here's Jim Tomey. It's tight to him. A fastball in. One and all. Rays with a run in the third, and the Twins with a run in the fourth inning. Just a little bit in there. Not much. 2 and 0. See if Helenson uh, throws that 2 and 0 change up. And this hitter's count for Jim Tomey. And a wave and a miss. Yes, he did. Well, that's what you got to be calling in the big leagues. And that's a veteran. Acting pitch right there. He knows what Jim Tomey's all about. He knows Jim Tomey's on his way to the Hall of Fame. Might have to double up on it too, even if Tomey's thinking about it, looking for it. And a wave and a miss and a breaking ball, curveball there. Good pitch. Good curveball after a change. That's a good pitch. Now the other way around, you don't want to throw a changeup too much after a curve because it's straight in the same speed. But a curveball after a change has some depth to it. That's smart pitching right there. Two and two. Here it is. Swing and a miss. He got him. He came back with a changeup and strikes out the veteran Tommy for the second straight time. Both times using the changeup. We're tied 1 1, middle of four.
Quinn, his major league debut for that. We go back to Jeff Neiman against the Orioles on the 13th of April in 2008. There's some other race starters to accomplish that, including Rolando Arojo. For Mickey Calloway over Montreal, Joe Kennedy, the late Joe Kennedy, Scott Casper, and Jeff Neiman, the most recent. Matt Joyce opens the bottom of the fourth, and he takes a pitch outside, 1-0. and That was impressive pitching there to finish off Tomey, wasn't it? I'll tell you, he is veteran-like. Oh, yeah. Joyce out in front of a change up there, and it's 1-1. One and one. And What we've seen here in the first four innings of uh, Jeremy Hellickson has been a continuation of the little bit we saw of him in spring training and has confirmed all the reports that we had gathered from his time in the minor leagues, particularly the last couple of years. Well, I like the mound presence. It's exactly as advertised. Cool under fire. 2-2 two, two now, the count on Joyce. If you're facing a, a Jim Tomey, 2-0 and o count, he goes change up, then the curveball after the change up to get the count where he wanted so he could come back with his strikeout change up. That was a good sequence right there. Didn't stay with three changes in a row. He went change up, different look with the curveball for strike two, and then punched him out with a great fadeaway change up for strike three. It's fouled. Count is still 2 2. Ray's got a run in the third inning. And Minnesota a run in the fourth, leaving two men on. Kadire, the first baseman. Joyce hit the ball hard, but Kadire grabbed it at first. Yeah, Matt tracks the ball pretty well. That was a nice at bat. He hit a bullet right at Kadire. Here's BJ Upton. Cleveland has taken a two to one lead on Boston in the top of the fourth inning in Boston. Shelly Duncan, a two run double. Upton fouls it. And Kevin Euclid has left that game with a jam thumb injury. <laughs> wow. Another injury for Boston. One and one. And in the uh, New York Toronto game, Alex Rodriguez 0 for 2. He just struck out. There's a liner toward the corner and right. That's going to be in there for extra bases. Upton's on his way to second and will stop with a double. So Upton, who's had past success against Bovano, continues that right now. He is 7 of 13 lifetime against him with two doubles and a home run. Well, we talked about BJ. There's a lot of hits to right field, and he goes that way. Look at this pitch. It's middle away, and he takes it. To right field, fading away from Kubel. It's a sure double right off the bat. There's your Chuckers double of the game. Here's Sean Rodriguez. Sean called out on a fastball his first time. There goes Upton stealing third. The throw, not in time. Upton steals his second base. That's how dynamic he can be. 30 steals on the year now for Upton. Well, he gets great acceleration. He's just gone. Valencia, you see, is at third base expecting that, so he gets there early. Uchera makes a nice throw, and DJ gets in there easily. Not even close. Now the infield comes close for Minnesota. And a little number first base side. Upton's coming to the plate and he is out. Kadire to Butera. So Upton trying to score on the number down the first base side. Is the second out of the inning. That play's put on by Joe Madden, so you don't blame DJ. That's the contact play. They're supposed to 
As soon as the batter makes contact, you're supposed to break from third base. Get your secondary lead. BJ's doing that. You're supposed to break. Little cue shot off the end of the bat. Nice throw by Kadir. Give Kadir credit. He came up and threw a strike to home plate. But that's a pre designed play where if you make contact, you're supposed to break from third and make the defense make the play. And the Twins did. The Twins, again, the number one defensive team in baseball. Over to first, and Rodriguez is back in. Sean, seven out of nine in the running game. The Rays have picked up a couple of steals in this game tonight. And another move on Rodriguez. Sean back in. A 1 1 tie. Putting that contact play on uh, with Upton is, is pretty standard for Joe Madden. Uh, yes. he, he wants to be aggressive and force the other team to execute a play. That's exactly right. The only problem is you got the number one defensive team in baseball That's right. out there. And Kadire, by the way. Has played a lot of first base with Morneau's injuries the last couple of years, and he's played pretty well over there. Remember, he's got a, a nice outfield arm. That was a nice, short, compact throw, too. The throwing motion. Red Yanks lifts it back into left. Delman Young is there waiting to retire the side. No runs a hit. One man left. We're through four, and we're tied 1 1. Really? How are you doing? Was it the first inning a little rough? Um, I'm getting better. It's, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I knew he could, could do it, you know. But obviously, I was nervous. What about the group that's with us? I see a uh, an All Star jersey over here. That's his cousin, right? This is, yeah, this is cousin Joey. He's, he's wearing his uh, Futures Game All Star jersey. And we've got family cousin. This is old coach. Some friends down this way. I know uh, grandma's here, mom's here. A lot of people, I guess six of you guys flew in, but some people actually made the drive from Des Moines? Yeah, um, his high school coach down at the end of the row here, he, he came with some people and they took off yesterday about 5 o'clock. What is that, like 20 hours? Right, 21, 22 hours. 20, 22 hours. Well, I, I want to let you enjoy your son uh, pitch here, but I know this is an exciting day for all of you. How do you think? What you've seen from him and that he's handled things. I think he's looking awesome. He's uh, handling himself real good, I think. I agree with you guys. A lot of people from this great state of Iowa here enjoying his debut. Back to you. Yeah, some great moments for the uh, Hellickson family. Breaking ball is in there to Valencia for a strike, and the count is one and two. It's uh, 
a once in a lifetime moment and boy uh, they should and uh, are soaking it all in that's down two balls two strikes I think he gets a little bit of his uh, calm demeanor from his dad yes he does <laughs> <laughs> his dad was right to the point with Todd didn't waste any words <laughs> Little roller to the right side for Brignac. And the toss over there. Yeah, that shot uh, we had of his dad, Steve, uh, looking back as if, who was that masked man of just sitting <laughs> next to me here? That's right. A well dressed man. <laughs> well, you, you can only imagine the feeling, though, watching your son in his uh, major league debut, and, and he has pitched extremely well. And already got tested last inning. Chance that the Twins could have had a big inning, and he shut it down by striking out Kadire and Tomei back to back. There's JJ Hardy. Starts him with a breaking ball. Ryan Onora will not go for it. It's a ball. One ball, no strikes. Onora, a veteran of better than 13 years of time in the big leagues. 2 0. Oh. Run five hits for the Rays and a run on a couple hits for Minnesota. Three and oh. And outside just a bit. So Hardy walks on four pitches, second walk of the contest. Time to. Take a look at the upcoming race schedule brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. Twins in for three more, including a day game on Thursday, tomorrow night, and Wednesday. Neiman Price and Davis to start the rest of this series. And as we look forward to the upcoming race schedule, you can live forward with Just for Men Hair Color. Now the catcher, Butera. Drew Butera. 0 for 1. And a move to first. Hardy is back in. That's just to check and see if maybe a hit and run is on. Or I doubt a bunt with one out, but possible hit and run man right here with Butera. And that's a strike at the knees. We're one out into the fifth inning. And Hellickson has made 66 pitches. Uh, the Rays were talking about 100 to 105 uh, pitch limit for Hellickson. He's gone over 100 pitches twice uh, so far this year with the Durham Ball Club. It's fouled the other way. Out of play. 0-2. Been very consistent in the velocity of this fastball. Every one of them, just about 92 or 93. He's, he's varied his speeds on his curve, and I like that. 75, sometimes, sometimes 80. He's actually thrown his curve a, almost a little bit of a slurve a couple of times. I wonder Kadaya for strike three had a different, had a little bit of a slurvy slider type break to it. Report together here. Yeah, no, <laughs> and, and you know, uh, uh, some of the notes that uh, that I've taken on him, uh, not only you know about how great his changeup had been and, and working on that curveball, but he had been experimenting with uh, a little slider from time to time. So that might be uh, something of a hybrid pitch there that we're seeing with the foul ball of a breaking pitch, and the count is still two strikes. Yeah, I think I, I think he's done that intentionally. I don't think it's by by accident. He's shown a couple of them here as uh, the lineup has turned over here a couple of times. He's mixed a couple of these in in the last three or four batters. That was a curveball there. Left that one up to Butera. That's a straight overhand curve. Look over at first. Hardy the runner. He walked. The 0-2 pitch. Grounds it foul. 
Ricochets rebounds back out to Longoria. Turns it into a souvenir. Curveball changeup the last two pitches. Butera was on the changeup. Nice fastball off the outside corner. Get a double play ball. So setting up out there. Butera checked. So they did go for the fastball away, but off the plate. Yeah, that was a nice try. That's exactly what they were trying to do. 93 away. Either get a, a chase, or if he does swing the bat, you get a little ground ball to the left side. So far, with just with the way of watching how Butera swinging in this at bat. Pitch is down. Two balls, two strikes. One on, one out. It's a good running count here. Uh, Ron Gardenhire, they don't run a whole lot in Minnesota. They only have 41 stolen bases. That's 26 in Major League Baseball. So, but this would be more of a run and hit play if you put Hardy in motion. Stays put. The fastball comes in too close. So a full count. Three and two. Well, I would think here with Span on deck that you would definitely put Hardy in motion now, even though Butera strikes out 20% of the time. For a guy that doesn't hit a whole lot, or at least his, his time in the big leagues, that's a lot. But I think you put him in motion anyway, because even if there's a strike and not throw him out, you got Span leading off. That's hitting. Two with a runner going and the pitch hits him. So that'll push Hardy up to second. Butera hit by the pitch. Two men on with one out. There's another look at this. Yeah, this one just got away. He's trying to go. Actually, he missed location badly on that one. He's trying to go away. You see, Jason has to reach all the way over and it. Bites Butera. Jim Hickey, Ray's pitching coach out there. Hellickson added to the Ray's active roster today with uh, Andy Sonnenstein going on the disabled list. A little uh, left hamstring issue, and uh, they can backdate that, which means that Sonnenstein would be uh, available to be activated. Uh, on the 7th of August. So just uh, five days down the road. As they backdate. Uh, Andy going to the DL. Two men on one out and here's Denard Span. Span all for two tonight. The pitch is a strike. And that's the uh, move the Rays made today with uh, Andy's record of 2 0 and 30 appearances. So, with that retroactive back to the 19th, he could be ready to go in just a handful of days. Span has gone out pitcher first and short to first. And he can really run. Yes, he can. Tough man to double up, especially being a left handed hitter. Which oh. covered up by Jason. This man laid off the changeup. It's one and one. Well, the first time you see a, a young pitcher, the pitcher will always have the advantage. This is now, now they've see, all seen a couple of the bats. The Twins start their third time through yeah. the lineup. You can see how good Span has been with been in scoring position. And that pitch is off the plate end, and Span, who has really taken to their new ballpark, and the Minneapolis had struggled on the road to start the year, but he is swinging the bat much better recently on the road. He was way down for a long time. His road average right now is 219, but it's been much better than that lately. 
He's a good hitter. A 2 1 count. He fouls it up the right side out of play. So that takes the count to 2 and 2. Jays have something going in New York. Encarnacion has just hit a home run, and the Blue Jays are going to take the lead on the Yankees at the top of the fifth. That's three to two, Toronto. That last swing there would dictate that you come back with your changeup. The way he pulled that fastball. Let's we'll see. And a swing and a miss. He's out of there. So Span strikes out. Two gone. He was out with first base occupied there. Another good sequence. Nice job by Jaso to block it. Of course, with throws at first and second, uh, there's no base for Span to run to. So Jaso just makes sure he blocks it, keeps it in front. No throw, no tag. Nice pitch. That was a curveball. So two gone. That's strikeout number six for Hellickson. And Alexi Casilla steps in. First pitch fastball fouled back. That's a strike. Casilla has scored the Minnesota run. That came in the fourth inning after he had walked. He drew a one out walk and was eventually driven home by Jason Kubel's base hit. By much. One and one. Ellingson trying to get out of this spot with a couple men on base. And a line drive right to Sean Rodriguez at first. That retires the side. We go to the bottom of the fifth and we're still tied. One one. The Twins came back at a base hit from Jason Kubel to score Alexi Casilla in the fourth. That tied the game, and we are tied 1 1, headed into the home half of inning five. And 81 pitches for Hellickson through five. 65 through four for Pavano. It's Jason Bartlett steps in. A ball, no strikes. Bartlett sacrificed his first time. And a line drive into. 
into left field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Young plays it on one hop. And the Rays put their leadoff man on base. Spirit to Rays game from the all-inclusive Whitney Bank Club, offering extraordinary seating and luxurious lounge and dining areas. The Whitney Bank Club features an upscale full menu buffet and inclusive drink options. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or go to RaysBaseball.com to purchase or for more information. Leadoff single to left. There goes Bartlett on the first pitch. It's a strike and Bartlett is out at second base. Hardy put the tag on him as Bartlett is caught stealing for the third time this year. Another good throw by Drew Butera. Fastball away that looks it acts as a pitch out. Just a great release. And they got Jason Bartlett by play. And there's a base hit off the glove of Kadir rolling into foul territory. Jason's going to dig for second and will arrive ahead of the return throw. So Jason winds up at second on a shot off the mitt of Kadir. The 11th double of the year for Jason. Good hustle by John, too. As usual, very good base runner. And really, you can't tell from that angle from where he's at as that ball breaks down and into his swing. He's running hard. Can't really tell how far that's going to get by Kadire because it didn't get by that far. But John's hustling all the way, and he's his own base coach right there. He doesn't need any help. He read the play. Now, Carl Crawford and the Rays with the fourth straight inning have a scoring opportunity. They cashed in one run in the third. Mono starts Crawford with a fastball on the outside corner. Strike one. I tell you, Butera calls a pretty good game. They, they were starting Carl off with changeups. I'm sure he was. They can change up. He got a fastball right there instead. And a fly ball headed into left center field. Young on the run, and it's going to be over his head. Jason will score. Crawford pulls up at second with a double, and the Rays lead two to one. Crawford hit one toward left center field that sailed over Young's head. Well, that took off on Delman Young. I thought he might have it tracked. Ball is up and Carl goes with it. Delman Young. Got, I think he got it off the tip of his glove, did he not? Look like right there. He didn't exactly time his jump perfectly. And it cost him. Yeah, that ball sliced a little bit on him mm -hmm. and he just a bit overran it. Yeah. Here's Evan Longoria. The pitch is inside. 1 0. So the Rays now have a one run lead again. It's a 2 to 1 ball game. Longoria lays off the changeup. Yeah, this ball slices a little bit off the end of the bat by Carl, but still got plenty on it. Yeah, I think it fooled Delman Young right there. See, he gets it, I think, right off the tip of his glove. You, you're right. The angle, it, it, got, it went behind him because of the slice, and that's why he missed it. The turn, Crawford back in at second. Carl picking up his 58th run, batted in. That's his 23rd double. I don't think for an instant because they've been knocked down with two base runners that that will, that will stop the race from running. And the pitch is down. The Rays have had two caught stealings and they've swiped two bases tonight. Crawford at second. Start of a break 
by Casilla. Time call. Longoria stepping out. Takes one off the plate. So he goes to first for the walk. Two men on with a run home and one out. Just a reminder to be on the lookout for the Miller Lite Taste Greatness moment coming up later in tonight's game. Cabano is going to get a visit from his pitching coach, Rick Anderson. Trots to the mound. Willie Ibar up here. The Rays have put two on after taking a two to one lead. Well, you knew uh, Evan Longoria wasn't getting get anything to hit. Well, Evan drove in the run in the third on a pitch that was off the plate by plenty. He lined it into right field for an RBI single. <laughs> Willie Ibar in the batter's box. That's a fastball missing. One ball, no strikes. Side He's out in front of the change of speed. It's a one one count. A ball, two strikes. Good ground ball pitch right there. Got some good sick to it. Crawford, second, Lagoria first, and a swing and a miss. High bar out in front of the off speed pitch. He's out on strikes. Two away. Good sequence by Carl Pavano after the 90 mile an hour fastball. Great jump on a changeup. 81 miles an hour. Way out in front. We've seen a couple of good changeups tonight from both starting pitchers. Ellison and Pavano. Well, the Rays have taken the lead. They have an opportunity to add to that lead. Here's Matt Joyce. They're going to have to do it with two outs. And a fastball. He takes it for a strike. Time around the lineup because now you're seeing fastballs early to get to the changeup. Before that, we were seeing changeups early in the count to get to the fastball. And I'm sure Matt was thinking probably a changeup in the first two pitches. Now he's just got to protect. And a foul ball off the fastball, out of play. Still two strikes. Bartlett opened with a base hit, was caught stealing for the first out. Jaso followed with a double. Two pitches later, Crawford doubled him home. Longoria walked. Ivar struck out on a changeup. Joyce down 0 2. And he takes this one, a changeup off the plate and away. 1 and 2. Now the defense is back, and if Carl wants to steal third, he, he can do it now with two strikes. He 
defense is playing way back. And a little tap foul, so Joey stays alive. And again, another change up there. The right side, they're playing Matt to pull, so the shortstop Hardy would cover second base. So if Carl wants to take third, he can. He can almost walk into third base, even though he's a left hand hitter up there, and it's easier for the catcher. Evan, I'm sure that's going to throw behind to second base if, if Carl does decide to go. So Evan's got to be careful. Inside with a fastball that evens the count, two and two. I'm not getting the sense, though, that Carl's thinking about stealing here with Joyce at the plate. See how deep Hardy is at shortstop? Way back. And a long one down the right side, but that's going to be foul. Joyce with that power had to turn the fastball around and was a little bit out in front. Yeah. That's why Carl's staying right at second base. See if Joyce can do that again. Well, he gets his hands inside that very well. That's like the pitcher the Yankees try to get in on him. Posada called that two strike fastball in. He got his hands inside and hit the home run. Had that been the sixth inning, it would have been fair. Yeah, it would have been. That's his inning, right? That's <laughs> the fifth right now. And the 2 2. He fouls this one back into the screen. And after getting down 0 2, he's having himself a good at bat here. Yeah, he really is. He's tracking the ball well. He's, and he's had two good at bats. He's already singled and lined out hard to Kadir. You can see his pitches seen there, seven, six, and eight now in this at bat. You like that in a young hitter, especially a guy with some pop. Yeah, his on base percentage coming in is 370. There goes Crawford, and the pitch is fouled up the right side. Longoria was trailing. And Joyce reaching on the changeup made contact and fouled it. That's smart by Carl because he gave he gave Matt a choice uh, Joyce a chance to hit the long ball. Once he saw the foul ball, I think Carl said, you know, he's gonna throw him a change up here. It's a good pitch to run on. So that's smart. And that's exactly what the pitch was. Well, Joyce has made this at least a 10 pitch at bat with this pitch coming. Here it is. And it's low and the count is full. He laid off the changeup. He is really tracking the ball well. He didn't even flinch on it. So he's worked the count to 3 2. And with two outs, the runners will be breaking on this pitch. So if he does hit one in the gap, he's got a chance to score Longoria. He does. I just want to make sure he tracks the ball again. 3 2, and it's fouled up the right side. Hey, she grabbed it. How about that? Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Good hands. Hey, well, that was a tough pitch for Matt Joyce, too. He went down and got that because that was too close to take. Tough changeup right there. Well, it's turned out to be 11 pitches in this at bat after he got down 0 2. Swings and drives one into deep left center. That ball is well tagged and off the wall. Crawford scores. Longoria heads to the plate. It's a double for Joyce. And the Rays make it a three-run inning. It's 4-1 to one, Tampa Bay. And what an at-bat from Matt Joyce. On the 12th pitch of the at-bat after getting behind 0-2. Joyce doubles up the gap the other way in the left center. Yeah, Carl went fastball away, and it was up. And Matt Joyce just went with it. Well, he really stayed short to the ball and cracked the ball well. And then great extension on the finish right there. Beautiful, beautiful swing. And is he strong? That ball almost got out to left center field. Beautiful swing. Now here's Upton. BJ fouls it back and he already has two hits, had a pretty good cut at that pitch up right there. I tell you, Matt Joyce is making a uh, nice case for himself to be locked into that five spot. 
Well, I'll tell you, you're right. Especially when Carlos gets back. I mean, you might even think about him in the four spot until Carlos does get back. One and one. Give Evan a little bit more protection. Inside, two balls and a strike. I know how managers think, though. They said, boy, he's having such success in that five spot. I don't want to change that, you know. <laughs> but with the injuries the Rays have, that, that would be a nice protection behind Evan, the way he's swinging right now. Well, Joyce continues to see a lot of pitches. Upton fouls the 2 1. That takes the count to two balls and two strikes. Boy, that was some at bat by was. Matt Joyce. Well, he's got 20 RBIs now. Five home runs and 20 RBIs. A couple of hits tonight, and the batting average keeps climbing. He's up to 247 now with that double. So the Rays make it a three run inning in a four to one game. Chases is out on strikes on the changeup. Rays leave a man, but they score three and lead 4 1. This Twins lineup that that's going to be coming at him, you know, and and I know he's gonna he's gonna pound the strike zone, all that stuff. He's uh, makes quality pitches and all that stuff, and looking forward to catching him. A little scouting report from John Jaso as we head to the sixth inning of a 4-1 game. The Rays scout that signed Jeremy Hellickson, 26 years as a scout, seven with the Rays. Tom Couston. Tom, what did you see about this skinny right-hander out of Des Moines, Iowa, that you really liked? Well, he was 14 years old and he was hitting 90 miles an hour. At 14. At 14, and you could barely see him on the mound, and then uh, he just kept developing and developing. Uh, we've seen him in high school up to 95 miles an hour. You had a pretty good idea as he deals with Delman Young uh, here to start the sixth inning. You had a pretty good idea when you signed him that we might see this someday, him on a major league mound? Yes, because, uh, and, and R.J. Harrison, who's, our scouting director was quite instrumental in us bringing him here. He was a national guy at the time. Uh, his control and his ability to locate the fastball, put it where he wants to, was always there. And he had secondary pitches that he was capable of doing all the time. Well, Evan Ligoria makes the play to retire Delman Young. And his secondary pitches seem to be something he's really developed over the last couple of years. But he had the makings of him as a young child, as a young player at the age of 16, 17. We followed him very heavily. I would think this is a moment of pride for you, not only because of Jeremy Hellickson, but there's a guy playing for the Twins today who you signed as well. Yeah. Who would that be? <laughs> Mr. Tomey. Yes. <laughs> Jim Tomey uh, and Jeremy Hellickson, he kind of spanned a little bit of a, an age range there. 
Jason Kubel, guys, go ahead. Oh, gets hold of this breaking ball, and he has just hit it out. Kubel, who had driven in the run in the fourth inning, drives in the second Minnesota run. A breaking ball, and that's his 13th home run of the year, making it 4-2. to two. Take another look at that. Yeah. First pitch curveball. Hey, you know what? It, back door kind of ran down and into his swing, but uh, Kubel used his back leg and went down and got through it. I'm going to give him credit on that one. Michael Kadire. And the pitch is a strike. Kadire 0 for 2. And the pitch is down. It's 1 and 1. So uh, Tom Kuston certainly has. So uh, if, if you go Jim Tomey to Jeremy Hellickson, it's number one. It's two pretty good talents right there, and it spans a little time. Well, I, I'm one to think that Tomey's going to the Hall of Fame when his time is done. He, he will have 600 home runs. And a fly ball back into left. Crawford retreats to make the catch on this one. So Kadire is the second out. Base is empty with two gone, and the hitter will be Jim Tomey. And I'll tell you what, all, all that Hellickson has done against Tomey is punched him out twice. And last time in a very tough situation with two on and two out. Yeah, a couple change-ups to get him. By the way, Toronto has taken an 8 to 2 lead on New York. And a cut to miss. He starts him with a changeup. Blue Jays had a seven run fifth inning to knock out A.J. Burnett. A little bit inside with a fastball. That was a smart pitch. He's throwing him a lot of off speed stuff. He tried to paint him up inside with 92. Is down fastball again, two and one, but he's been right around the strike zone in there. He has, he didn't miss by much. And of course, Tomei has always had great power to dead center or left center. And a ground ball into short right. Brignac out of the shift is there to make the play. And that takes care of Minnesota. Bottom of inning six coming 4 2, Tampa Bay. One of the most powerful lineups in Ram history. That looks like the last time I rode with you, Kevin. Yeah, I know. You, you moved down that highway. I have to. You know how to have to know how to navigate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
speeding right along. Bottom of the sixth, John Rodriguez is going to lead off for the Rays, and he takes the pitch for a strike. <laughs> you know, uh, we were talking about this in the break here. Hellickson now has 93 pitches through six innings. And uh, we're going to guess there's a ground ball to third, scooped by Valencia, and his throw to first is in time. One away that uh, Joe Madden may go hitter to hitter with uh, Hellickson in the seventh inning. They'd like to limit him to 100, maybe 105 pitches. And the bullpen's uh, a little thin in that. Uh, the backside of that bullpen, Soriano has been very busy, and so yep. the Rays might just try that approach. Well, I think so because you got seven, eight, nine in the lineup. I don't think he'll let Joe Madden will let the lineup turn over for a fourth time at all. But he has got Valencia on a couple of ground balls to second, and I think you do. I think you go hitter to hitter. He's got 93 pitches. Strike two to Brignac on two, and really he only had a 12 pitch inning. Yeah, Kubel hit the, the curveball, but after that. I mean, he hit, didn't bat an eye once again. Fastball still 92. The ball two strikes now. But I, I think know, just over 100 pitches now. I, I think Dwayne, when he goes out, though, I think the bullpen gets up behind him. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Nice start by the 23 year old right hander tonight. Brindiak hits it on the ground and it's grabbed by Kadire. First baseman makes the play unassisted. Two up and two down in the bottom half of inning six. So with the base is empty, that brings up Jason Bartlett. Rays tonight have four runs and nine hits off Pavano. Bartlett singled in the fifth and was caught stealing. He goes after the first pitch and lifts it into center. Span makes the catch and the Rays are up and down one, two, three. We're through six. Four, two, Rays. As we move into the seventh inning, Jeremy Hellickson making his major league debut tonight on the Am Scott replay. And so far, so good. He's shown a variety of uh, a good fastball, nice overhand curveball, excellent, excellent changeup. I think the most impressive thing is just cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Nice, efficient delivery. Finishes his pitches well. And he's gone six strong innings right here tonight in his major league debut. I think you've got to be very pleased. I think Joe Madden will definitely protect him this inning. 
I mean, just go hitter to hitter. The man gets on, I think the bullpen gets up. Well, here's Danny Valencia, the third baseman, and he goes after the first pitch fastball, and he bounds it back, strike one. I think the bullpen's getting stirred right now. 54% of the time for fastballs, 20% are the breaking balls, a variety of curves, and a couple of uh, slurby slider type pitches, and 25% changeups. That's a good ratio, very good ratio. And the pitch is a strike. Two couple fastballs to open the seventh inning from Hellingson. And just as we thought, the bullpen is, is getting stirred right now. Yep, Chad Walls is going to get up and start the throw. Ground ball headed to short. Bartlett makes the play. Valencia is out number one here in the seventh inning. Well, he's given you 19 outs. Now you start counting outs those final nine. That's where the manager starts counting outs, and that mixing and matching goes on, especially with a rookie. Because Hellickson has done his job. Bill doesn't want him going much more than 100, 105 pitches tonight, 96 overall. So he's been outstanding. J.J. Hardy takes one just a little bit wide. And, boy, I'll tell you, when he misses, he doesn't miss by much. Exactly. That's you're thinking this, That's exactly what I was going, where I was going. He doesn't miss by much. And when he misses, he misses down. You like that. I really haven't seen him miss up tonight. Yep. And that's impressive. Two balls, no strikes. Ground ball to third. Longoria takes care of that with a strike across the diamond to John Rodriguez. 2 0 fastball, and Hardy grounds out. Two up, two down. Start your weekend at Friday Fest, presented by Captain Morgan on Friday, August 13th. The Rays and the Orioles square off. The first 10,000 women receive a navy blue metallic T-shirt after the game. Don't miss the Village People in concert. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets now. Butera lifting a foul ball. Fastball up the right side and back. One strike. It's 100 pitches right there for Hellickson. Now this could be his last hitter either way, even though uh, he's gotten span out three times. And a strike. Oh, two. And the well, he's gone to that fastball in this inning a yes, lot. He has. They've seen him now three times, and he's a nice sequencing going on right here. He wants to go back to the fastball. Nelson called this pitch away. One ball, two strikes. Well, there have been some outstanding uh, pitching debuts of uh, pitchers throughout Major League history. And we've seen a pretty solid one here tonight from Jeremy Hellickson. One, two is lifted up the right side out of play. Holds the count at one ball, two strikes. Well, and you're talking about, and we know more, uh, more no and Maurer are out. Maurer will probably. DH tomorrow, but it's still the number one hitting team in baseball for batting average, 283. Yeah, yeah. they're fifth in the American League and run score. Right. One, two, a little low. Mauer had some shoulder issues and had the, the cortisone shot in that shoulder Saturday. So they think he might be back tomorrow to DH. Two and two now. And the count runs four. And the situation on Orno and Maurer. Orno suffered that concussion on the 7th of June of July. So he's been out a while. Yeah, and the, the Corazon shot, you like 48 hours for that to settle in. Three two is fouled away. And uh, Mauer had that after Saturday's game, so that's why he could possibly have some action tomorrow night. I, I don't think they want him throwing, but I think they will DH him. 106 pitches in. For me, I got to believe this is definitely his last hitter. 
matter what happens. 3 2 again. And a ground ball to second. Rendyak with the toss to first, and that takes care of Minnesota. Three ground balls in the seventh inning. And Hellickson, as he walks off the mound here in the seventh, gets a great hand in his major league debut. Middle of the seventh, and it's 4 to 2, Tampa Bay. project. What it is, is Evan Longoria is trying to win a $200,000 Pepsi Refresh Project Grant. He's a raised representative for the project through Moffitt Cancer Center's KIP Knowledge is Power Kids program. Kids of all ages and backgrounds receive health education and participate in fun activities for a healthy future. Evan Longoria getting it done in the community earlier today at the Moffitt Cancer Center. Cancer Center and you can type raise to 76462 until Tuesday, August 17th to vote for Evelyn Goria and the Rays in the Pepsi Refresh Project. Guys, back to you. Bottom of the seventh inning underway. The Rays are facing the left-hander, the veteran lefty Ron Mehe. And the first pitch to Jaso is in there for a strike. Jaso, Crawford, and Longoria do up for the Rays in the inning. making his 35th appearance of the year. Been around a long time now, Ron Mayhe. Started his career as an outfielder. Would you believe it? <laughs> With me? <laughs> yeah, there you are. <laughs> he was my center fielder in Boston. One ball, two strikes. And he's made his living out of the bullpen. Yeah. He did hit one home run in his career against the Angels in Anaheim. He's a good center fielder, but his arm was so good that he, he, he made the right choice. He had a long career as a lefty reliever. A 2 2 count. Chase fouls it off his foot. In case anybody wants to know what year we're talking about, it was 1995. <laughs> about that. That wasn't that so long ago. No, I know. Huh? <laughs> that was the strike year, and uh, actually, Ron uh, was a replacement player. That's right. The first one recalled in, by uh, the Red Sox. And uh, Mike Greenwell was the player rep, and he wasn't received all that well at first. But Mike and I talked about it. Then Mike was the first one to greet him when he hit his home run. And of course, uh, the Angels drilled him the next time. Tony Phillips was popping off, and we had a little fight going on back and forth with the Angels that year yep. for a while. But uh, after that, all the players 
understood why he was a replacement player and they, they forgot about it and forgave him. Two two, Jaso's out on strikes. Slider got him. Yep, good slider. Well, that's why he's been around for a long time now as a lefty reliever specialist because he got that good slider. And Chad Falls will get up again in the Rays bullpen with one out here in the home half of the seventh inning. Crawford takes a pitch down and away. Piece of that one foul. Four to two, the Rays lead. They scored a run in the third. Minnesota scored it, scored a run in the fourth inning to tie it. And the Rays put three up in the fifth. Minnesota a run in the sixth, and so it's four two. Two balls and a strike in the major league debut of the 23 year old right hander Jeremy Hellickson tonight. There he is. Crawford, did he go? He checked. Two and two. That one is fouled away. So it's a full count now to. Carl Crawford. And he bounces this one to the shortstop. Hardy's throw is in time. A strikeout and a ground out. Two up, two down. Now well, Hardy ended up getting a nice big hop on that last on that last top. That made it easy for him to get Carl. Well, Evan Longoria is due up. Ron Gardenhire wants a right-hander. Call to the bullpen. Brought to you by. Metro PCS wireless for all. Tampa Bay Buick and GMC dealers. Anthony Slamma is going to be the new pitcher as Evan Longoria is in there to face him. And the first pitch is a high fastball. One ball, no strikes. One and one. Just two thirds for Mehe, and now Slamma comes on. In his fourth game. Two and one. He's out of the University of San Diego. Brian Mattis, the Orioles out of USD. And 
and it now goes to three and one. And ball four. Longoria draws a quick walk. He goes to first, and that's going to get Willie Ibar up there. Willie's got caught in between the last couple of times he's DH. He's got to sit on something he likes and find a gap right here. He looks at a strike. Slide out, grounded out, and struck out. Struck out on a Carl Pavano changeup in the fifth inning. There goes Longoria. The pitch is a ball and the throw. He is not in time and threw into center. Backed up by Casilla. Throw to third and they are not in time. Longoria safely in at third base. A stolen base for Longoria, his 15th of the year. Casilla made a great effort. Made a play of it in third. That's a steal and an error on the throw by the catcher. Well, let's see Butera right here. He short hops. This one as Evan slide into the back so hard he can't handle it and Evan just never hesitated. That was a nice reaction play by Casilla. And Evan was able to keep his right foot on the bag. Nice job at third base there. By Chris Guccione. Base umpire. Stayed right with it. Now the 1-1 one -one to Ibar. Two balls and a strike. The Rays. Trying to pick up an additional run here in the bottom of the seventh with two outs. And it's three and one. Walk, steal, the error. Now three one to Ibar. They, they don't want to see. They don't want to see Matt Joyce up here, will he? Got to make sure he gets a good strike here. Otherwise, take it. And ball four is outside. A couple walks. Longoria now at third. Ibar goes to first. Will be the hitter. The twins are going to take a little time on the mound and see a call to the bullpen. Rick Anderson made the call and now he's going to make a walk to the mound as the twins try to get somebody up and uh, going in a hurry. Right hander Jesse Crane is up. Well, either way, they're going to have to face Matt Joyce right here. However, with BJ Upton on deck, they can be very careful and treat Matt Joyce as if there's runners at second and third because Evans already at third base in scoring position. So that's how I would attack it. Well, this, uh, you see, Upton, he would follow Joyce in the lineup. And uh, it has been a very productive week. For Matt Joyce, he has 12 runs batted in in the last eight days. Yeah, and I think that meeting right there was to give Crane time for BJ, but I also think it was about how to approach Matt Joyce, and I got to believe they won't give him anything to hit. And Matt's been uh, tracking the ball well. He hasn't been chasing, so he just got to try to sit on a mistake right here, something in his wheelhouse. Is a strike. Well, the kid's all over the place and he gets that call. <laughs> wow. Butera couldn't even catch it. Outside. One and one. 20 runs batted in now for Joyce. He had the two run double to left center field in the fifth inning. Step throw to first. Ibar is back in. And boy, Willie has to be careful down there. Yeah, there's nowhere for Willie to go. You don't need a you don't need a big secondary lead. And I tell you what, he just does get back. That That's is a right. great play by Butera. And a strike call. It's two and two. Joyce got behind 0 2 in the fifth and then worked a 12 pitch at bat before he doubled. 
2 2 now. And he fouls it back, a fastball. Good swing right there. That was a. Not where Slamma wanted it, I guarantee you that, because that was in his wheelhouse. Good swing by Matt Joyce. 2 2 here. And they wanted it away. Look at this pitch. He misses middle in and oh, just got underneath it. Inside. Three balls, two strikes. Well, he's seen 31 pitches tonight, Matt Joyce. And uh, a full count now. He's had a full count in the second inning, in the fifth, and in the seventh now. With 2 2 in the fourth, and he fouls this one. My bar retreats to first. Two outs and a full count. He was breaking, and of course, will be again. Braves lead four to two, trying to add. And strike three called on the outside edge. Slamma got a couple close calls. In that sequence, including this one, falls outside. We're through seven, four, two, Tampa Bay. For, for Hellickson. Started in the first inning, just very calm and cool and collected. Had a couple of ground balls back to him in the first. Mixed in match. Very efficient with his fastball. Excellent changeup. Puts in some good curve balls. Went seven strong innings tonight. Only giving up two runs in his major league debut. 107 pitches, seven innings, and he departs with a 4 to 2 lead. Mother Leanne. Here to watch this great night for Jeremy Hellickson. First pitch to span from Chad Walls is a strike. And we know that Chad, when he's on, he's got that good sinker. He can get lefties out. And a bouncer foul. 0-2. Oh, well, Walls was in the game yesterday against New York. They've got a double play ball. Brought on to face Lance Berkman and eventually got a 4 6 3 double play to end the eighth. That was huge, too. On a 3 1 pitch. Came right back and got him. And the head of Span. And a line drive, and that's going to fall in front of Joyce for a base hit. An 0 2 fastball and Span has his first hit tonight. 
Yeah, that one stayed up a little bit. Span was able to get through it. Now Casilla, Alexi Casilla stepping in. 0 for 2 with a walk. He scored a run in the fourth after he drew a one out walk. First pitch is a strike. And we just saw Brian Onora punch out Matt Joyce in a ball that was three inches out off the outside corner. So I'm John Jay, so I stay out there and try to get that pitch for calls. Chode and Wheeler up in the bullpen for the Rays. Tap foul down the third base side. We stayed away there, and the count is nothing and two. Seven innings for Hellickson tonight. Gave up two runs, three hits, a home run, struck out six and walked two. Now Chad Qualls. And a swing and a miss. The ball to the backstop, and Casilla's going to reach. But he first base was occupied, so he's out of there. Yeah, he's out. That's right. But Span moves up to second, of course. Yeah, if there's two outs in first base occupied, it's a different, different story. But once first base occupied, with less than two outs, there's no advancement by the batter runner. So it's a strikeout and a wild pitch. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a pitch. It, it was. Some movement on it. Well, here's Delman Young. He fouls it back. That's a strike. And the thing is, for Jason, who's done a nice job at blocking balls since he's been up here, he hasn't really caught calls before. So he's going to have to read you know, how his breaking ball, some of his pitches move. No excuse for not blocking that with two strikes, but I don't think he anticipated that one being in the dirt like that. 0-1 now to Delman Young. And that one had some bite on it. That's, two. that's a nasty slider right there. That had some bite, some depth. Look at that. That's an excellent pitch. Well, you could go out there one more time, expand it if you want to think. On Delman Young. See if he'll chase. And it's down. Came back with a slider. Young took it. One ball, two strikes. Well, we know that Young has been trying to pull everything. That's in that new ballpark. That's why he's been pulling the ball so much for home runs. Is right center at that new ballpark's tough, so he's kind of been in full mode. So I, I would continue to stay away from him. And he pops it up. Foul ball right side. That's Sean Rodriguez there to make the catch, and they did stay away from him with the slider. So Young fouls out. Span still at second. Jason Kubel. Is due and Madden's going to go to the bullpen. He wants the left hander. So we'll be back with a new race pitcher in a moment.
Harper. You can text your vote to 789-789. We'll have results of that poll after our game in the Rays Live postgame show. We also may have a roster move because the Rays did say Hellickson was up here just for this one start. So we'll find out if that's the case. We will, as always, hear from Joe Madden. So in addition to everything else going on, we will hear from Hellickson Madden and our postgame interview as well right on the field following the game. Rays Live, the postgame show, right after the game tonight, guys. Well, Randy Choate is on to face the left-handed bat of Jason Kubel. Ball started the inning, and uh, Spann got the base hit. Casillas struck out. A wild pitch, Spann moved to second. Young fouled out, and now a check swing by Kubel. And a little foul pop handled by Longoria, and that's going to do it. So Kubel fouls out, and we go to the bottom of the eighth for two rays. How can you not like waking up every day saying, you know what, I'm going to go throw a ball around and call it a day of work. Hey, where to control it, dog? Where to keep it small? Where to keep it small? He went like this. He went. And we'd like to thank Matt Garza for wearing that mic. And a reminder, of course, Matt threw the first no-hitter in Rays history on this homestand to open it. You can collect it. Piece of history tomorrow with the commemorative Matt Garza no hitter poster presented by the St. Petersburg Times when the Rays take on the Twins and the first 10,000 fans get one. So visit RaysBaseball.com and get your tickets for that one. Jesse Crane, the new pitcher, as we go to the bottom of the eighth. E.J. Upton takes a pitch down. One ball and no strikes. Pavano works six, Mayhay two thirds, and Slamma one third, and now it's Crane. One of the strengths of the Twins is their bullpen with some of the veterans down there, Jesse Crane being one of them. And a strike. And they helped themselves too, Dwayne, getting Matt Caps from the yeah, Nationals. Closes now, yep. Roush had been doing that job, especially when Joe Nathan went down in the spring. One and two. I'll tell you what, you, you and I were talking in the break. There's nothing wrong with that slider by Chad Qualls. That was nasty. Yes, it was. That's good news. See the way he uh, threw the ball. Good velocity, good movement. With the fastball, too. Two balls, two strikes. Nice pitch efficiency, Randy. That was good. Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. I think he'll be safe for say he could pitch tomorrow night. <laughs> Ground ball toward the hold. It's short. The tough play comes up on Hardy and no play. His Upton is on for the third time tonight. Well, this will give the Rays 
an idea of adding to their two-run lead now. Yeah, that came up and that bite him in the nose. I think it did. Ouch is right. The base hit. A big run out there. Open it up a little bit. A little bit more of a cushion. BJ with a couple steals tonight. John Rodriguez at the plate. Got to move to first up to this back end. The Rays have been running early a lot, so you got to be careful here for a pitch out or just a fastball off the outside corner that will act as a pitch out for Butera. This base hit for B.J. Upton, the tenth hit for the Rays tonight. And a pitch down and away. Taking the bunt on his own. We know he's one of the best bunters dragging for a base hit. Ball right on the outside corner. That's a tough pitch right there. Third baseman Valencia, though, is up expecting a bunt. He's up right at the edge of the turf. You see it right there on the left side of your screen. Pitch here, see what happens. And the bunt rolled toward the mound. Crane will go to first out there. To Dyer back to take the throw. Up to put it in the scoring position. Yeah, I think uh, that was put on. That was a sacrifice there. The first couple were just on his own. And now he actually watching these squares around. This becomes a sacrifice. Once it became a one and one count, Joe Madge said, "Let's let's get him over for sure and try to get one more run here." Two shots to do it with Brainiac and Bartlett. Good call. I, I like that call by Joe Madden. More pressure on the Twins here. They're going to walk Reed Brainiac. It's all right. What Jason Bartlett do next? An intentional walk coming here. It's interesting to me. I don't. I don't know that I would walk him right here. Brainiac can swing the bat. We know that. But now you're putting pressure on Crane. He has to throw strikes. And Bartlett is still hitting. Hits well with men in scoring position. Yeah, he came in tonight hitting 319 on the year with yeah. runners in scoring position. I just thought they might try to make some pitches on Brainiac and expand the zone with the base open. Rather than say, hey, I'll just put him on and expect two. Jason's tough to double up also with his speed. And you got Valencia who has to be cautious of the bunt, so it limits the range on the left side. And Jason has pulled some ground balls through that left side. So that was an interesting move by Ron Gardner. We'll see what it works out for him. Bartlett facing Crane for the first time. Takes a look at that pitch away. And also, Jason's been swinging the bat much better since the All Star break. Remember, this Jason hit 320 last year. One for two with a base hit tonight. He sacrificed his first time. And a fastball around the mid 90s for a strike. All right, Jason's just getting a little read. As you mentioned, he hasn't faced him before, so he's just getting a little read to track 
the speed of his fastball and how his breaking ball works. And the pickoff move back to second with Casilla breaking to the bag and up to back in. And the other thing, too, is if BJ steals, I do believe Butera will, will throw to second base. So Brignac has to either get a good secondary lead, but he has to be careful because Butera can throw behind him over there at first base. So he might even keep Brignac right there at first base. And a little popper up the right side foul. Kadires after it, but it's going to be out of his reach. And that will take the count to one and two. Upton reached on the infield hit, was bunted up to second. Brainiac intentionally walked. I could see George Hendrick. I mean, he's even with uh, Kadire at first base, so he's going to let Brainiac know. You see him right there? He's going to let Brainiac know if there's a throw behind. If he sees Kadire breaking toward the back, he'll let him know right away. Down and away. Two balls, two strikes. It's a good running count right here if you think Rain will throw a strike here. Basically put it in play. There go the runners. A swing and a miss. Throw to third. Not in time. And the Rays pull off a double steal. Bartlett strikes out. Upton steals third for the second time tonight. Trailing into second base goes Brignac. Yeah. So the Rays pull off a double steal, third steal for Upton. Yeah, I like that. Good count to run on right there. 2-2. Two, two. You're expecting a strike from Crane. He throws strikes. But Jason, I think he chased. Good jump by BJ. Good throw by Butera. DJ does get in there. So pitching change. Ron Gardner wants a lefty back in a moment. transmitted in any form, and all accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. Jose Mahadas, the lefty in with the Jaso due up, but Kelly Shopping will pitch hit for him. With Rays at second and third, one and all the count to Shopping. Upton at third, and the runner at second, Brignac. Oh, the Harris is tough. Tough on lefties. Pitch is a strike. I like this move. This is what managers love about managing what's going on right here in the eighth inning. And a point counterpoint. You know, Joe Madden pulling the trigger right here, going for two more runs. I, I like it. The double steal. Rays have stolen their way into putting both men into scoring position. 
Shopik misses. It's one and two, three steals for Upton tonight. First time he's done that in a game. And this is why Shopik's in there against the lefty. Yeah, 344 against left handers. He's got to make sure it gets one in the zone. He kind of chased that one. Takes it down. Two balls, two strikes. I'll tell you what, if I'm managing against the Rays, the less runners I can put on base, the better. I'll tell you, they've attempted seven <laughs> steals tonight, five stolen bases total. And I know what Ron Gartenhardt is thinking, and he's an excellent manager. Right now. The Rays will counter and do exactly what they just did. Okay, we'll, we'll still second and third now. And Shopik takes a call third strike to retire the side. We are through eight for two Tampa Bay. Tonight, the Rays hold a four to two lead. Kelly Shopik stays on to do the catching after pinch hitting for John Jaso. And in the ninth inning, Kadire, Tommy, and Valencia do up for Minnesota. Randy Choke got Kubel on one pitch in the eighth inning, and Randy's out here to. Start the ninth inning with Kadire to lead off, and then the left handed bat of Tomey to follow. And the pitch is outside, one ball, no strikes. Well, I thought he'd be ready for tomorrow night. I should have said he'd be ready for the ninth inning. Yeah. Yeah. It's obvious, though, so Joe, Joe Madden wants to stay away from overtaxing Soriano for sure. Ben Juan Soriano pitched an awful lot. Two balls, no strikes. There they are, just relaxing, kicking back. They know that's their situation, obviously Soriano, but he's been used an awful lot, and we have noticed the velocity down a little bit at times this week. And Choke falls behind Kadir. Three balls, no strikes. Him. So Choke gives up the pass. The Dyer goes to first. And now the designated hitter, Jim Tomey, comes on. You know that Joe Madden was thinking this right here. He definitely wanted the lefty for Tomey without using Soriano tonight, but 
I kind of thought maybe Dan Wheeler would start the inning because he can get lefties out, and the first guy of this inning is so important. You almost rather see Dan Wheeler matched up against Kadire because the first guy is the key guy. Now Tommy, and he takes a fastball down. It's five pitches out of the strike zone. One of the splits this year for Tommy. 220 against lefties, 270. Three against right handers. And that's a strike. Well, that's what Joe Madden's looking at. He's thinking, well, if Dan comes in and for some reason can't get Kadire, now I don't have a lefty to face Tommy. That's a good little slider right there. Ellingson balls and choked so far for the Rays. And Tommy. Missed one right there. One and two. That's also the problem, Dwayne, of not having the benefit of two lefties in your bullpen. Yep. In the big leagues, that's almost a necessity. And I would bet that Andrew Friedman is still looking for that. The one, two, and Toby is out on strikes. Choke strikes him out. That's the first out of the ninth inning. Here's the strikeout pitch. That's a good comeback by Randy Choate after walking Kadire on four pitches. That's, that's a lot of pressure right there with a guy that's on his way to 600 home runs. So with one out and a man on, Joe Madden wants the right-hander back in a moment. Now, no 2.30 feeling later. Visit 5hourenergy.com. By BB&T, best bank in town since 1872. And by AutoWay, if you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? AutoWay. Call 1-800-SHOP-AUTOWAY. We're in the top of the ninth, one on, one out. Dan Wheeler, the new pitcher for the Rays, as Danny Valencia steps in. Valencia... 0 oh for 3, but he's been a hot hitter. Ground ball back to the mound. Wheeler to second to Bart, but one first base. That will take care of that. One pitch and the 1 6 3 double play. Valencia grounds into two, and the Rays take the first game. It's a 4 2 final. So the Rays win their 66th game of the year. And Jeremy Hellickson will pick up the victory for the Rays in his first big league start. Balls, choke, and Wheeler follow. Took one pitch to get the double play ball from Valencia.